This is, of course, for regular product flow. But what if all of our loads aren't the same size and shape? What if we have something like this instead? So you'll see this a lot in um, material handling applications, just loads of boxes coming out in a heap. And they're all over the conveyor. And how can we model this product flowing through our system? Especially in this kind of bulk phase before it all gets separated out into a long line of loads that then can be modeled nicely using linear physics. Uh, just so you know how I created this, by the way, here's a load creator. Load creator just makes a cardboard box. And I've added in some logic when it creates a load, just using this events tab on load created. And that logic goes and randomizes its width, depth, height, and its location. That's a convenient way of creating this kind of spread of loads. You could also use a, a load from schedule component if you actually had some, some data about what the spread of different loads are. But this was a, an easy way to set this up. So how could I represent this in a system? It's going to be annoying to try to represent this in lots of parallel conveyors. So I want to instead propose an alternative which we've seen being used with some success. You could use black boxes. That would work pretty well. Black boxes flow in and you can use black boxes to represent transport, to represent singulation, represent other different processes going on. Or we could have a bit of fun with the web path animator. So let's see a finished result for the sake of time and I'll break down how this works. Here is an example of how we could use our web path animator to sorry, represent Andrew. boxes. Sorry, go ahead. Yes, yeah, sorry, you didn't see my hand up. <laughs> uh, I was just wondering, uh, you confirmed that whatever you do with the load creator, like you did in the volumetric example previously, uh, you will never get stacked loads on in linear physics, right? Only volumetric? No, no, you won't. You won't get stacked loads in linear physics, no. Linear All physics right. is, is basically just paths. The whole of linear okay. physics is just paths. Thanks. I've got a system here with a sensor. Sensor's just been brought out of the catalog and it has some custom logic on it. And it's got a property on it that works out the volume of loads that touches it. And we're going to then convert that volume of loads using the web path animator catalog into a block that's moved along in the web path animator. The web path animator allows you to create all sorts of different shapes that are then moved along a linear path, a bit like linear physics. What we're going to do is have each of these shapes represent a number of different boxes in one go. And I'm going to keep things simple. I'm going to measure the num the volume of boxes that come into the infeed over a period of time. And the bigger the volume, the bigger the shape I'm going to animate in the web path animator, which is going to make a nice visualization. And then when we get to the other end, I'll do the opposite. I've got some logic that says let's delete those web path animators that come in. And then let's use them to create the same volume of boxes at the other end. Imagine that this middle stage is significantly longer, right? Not just a, a corner. This could be an entire path of product. So boxes come in, they get deleted, and we make these 3D boxes that represent the volume in the infeed that's been translated in the web path animator. And then we move it along. And the web path animator can be start, started, stopped, split into multiple lanes, all of these different things. We're just abstracting out um, these individual irregular loads into units. This application or this approach can also be used for bulk flow of goods. So we're dealing with just cardboard boxes here. We're converting them into these, these blocks. But you can also imagine that this might represent a load of carrots <laughs> or um, a load of other loose goods where there's thousands upon thousands of loads and we don't want to represent them with individual physics objects. Instead, let's just represent the quantity with a height on these nice, clean uh, web path animators. Obviously, because this works with quit logic, you're really flexible on how you want to use this. This isn't a cookie cutter, reuse this model, and this is what you can use in your system. Instead, what I'm showing you is an idea 
that you can then implement in whatever way you see fit. And we've seen customers implement this in a, a really wide variety of ways to suit their needs. So just in case you're unaware of how we can use the WebPath Animator, what I've got is a procedure on this control point, and this is creating my blocks. We've got widgets to create these new paths, and I'm creating paths and then changing their height according to the in-feed volume that's coming in. And I'm creating these segments with a width of one meter, spacing them one meter apart. So this is representing meter blocks on my conveyor that's been converted into these more abstract web path animator sections. If I wanted to, I could change this to be a different level of fidelity. So say I wanted to change this to be half a meter, I just need to do this. And now we see smaller segments coming in, which will probably see a larger degree of variation right, between these sections that are being made. So it's up to you and how you want to model this directly. We then transport along um, our system and these conveyors or these, sorry, web path animation sections have speeds. We can turn them on and off and do all that kind of stuff as well with them. Uh, and that allows us to model the flow along with the web path animator. And then when we reach this end section, we have another procedure. And this procedure here is just calculating how much has been deleted, storing it up. And then when we've got enough to make a box, we make a box. So where we've got enough of a volume to make a box, we make a box. And at the other end, uh, I've got some logic here on this load creator that not only makes the boxes, but it also decrements the volume uh, that was stored up. So we'll just keep making boxes whilst we've got enough space to make boxes. So with this really simple implementation, I want to be clear that we're not tracking one little box gets turned into a transported object, then gets turned into the same box later. No, we're keeping it quite abstract. It's just same volume in to same volume out. And the actual size and shapes of each of the boxes is going to be different each time. But still, this type of flow is significantly more efficient. And also, we're running this system in volumetric physics, right? So we've got our nice bit of volumetric physics here and later on, but we're just simplifying out the flow in this section in our nice, efficient web path animator. I'll link you to some other examples where I've done similar things with web, web path animators, and you can have some, have a play around, see how it might be applied to your, to your different models. So these are the approaches which I would take if we're modeling large, large numbers of loads. Uh, if we're doing regular loads, I just have a catalog component which has lots of conveyor lanes side by side according to how many loads are gonna be side by side and then run it on linear physics. If we're wanting to use a regular product like this, and often in those are these types of models where we're doing these irregular product, then we often need to have like sorters and all sorts of other components that are modeled. Um, but I want to squeeze some better efficiency out during the transportation, then I'll use something like a web path animator to model this. Any questions about this, this topic? The loads you're recreating are not the very same that came no. uh, at first. You're recreating only based on the volume, right, in here? But they could be. If I change the logic, I didn't think it was necessary. If I change the logic, what we could do is have an array that contains the load depth width name of each of those loads that's then imprinted as a custom property upon these here that are then created right. on the other end. It's not that you can't. It's just this example I'm showing you didn't bother to. Okay, fine. <laughs> 